Selamat sore. Um, hari ini kita akan ngobrol dengan uh, Nico Kanter, orang yang sangat luar biasa. Kita tunggu sampai Nikonya datang. Uh, karena orang seperti Nico jarang bisa dapat kesempatan. And I'm so honored and lucky punya kesempatan ngobrol sama dia. Let's check whether Nico is uh, available ya. Yeah. Selamat datang, ada Amanda, Devina, selamat uh, sore, ada Rengina Kemik. Uh, this is someone that I don't know nih, Reng, Rengina Kemik. Dipanggilnya apa ya, Rengina, Rengina Kemik, Rengina, Regina. Um, Haro, here you go, we have Nico here. Hai hey, Nico. Hello Victor. <laughs> How are you? This is so fun. <laughs> Fine, thank you. <laughs> Nick, such an yes. honor lo uh, having you on board terus bisa ngobrol kayak gini nih uh, luar biasa. It's, it's such an honor uh, knowing how busy you are, how Uh, prominent your position is gitu ya. Oh. Rada deg-degan juga sebenarnya ngajak oh. Nico ngobrolnya rada deg-degan gue. <laughs> Jangan gitu dong. It is always a pleasure. You know, it's always a pleasure actually uh, dealing with you, Victor. So it is also an honor. I mean, actually, pleasure is mine. So, first of all, to be to be given to be actually given the book that you you author, the, the author was you, and it was actually a very nice book. So, thank you, thank you. I feel honored. I feel honored to to be talking to you. Well, one of the things sebenarnya kalau kita mau ngobrolin soal bukunya and then we will talk more about it. Uh, banyak hal yang uh, pengalaman yang aku tulis berkaitan sama BP. I didn't say it. <laughs> But um, there are a lot of uh, instances where uh, you invited me into your meetings and I'm so happy to see and why that's one of the reason kenapa aku ngajak Nico untuk ngobrol uh, sore ini. Karena okay. The reason I see since uh, BP time, I see someone who do facilitation without having any training. It's in you. Gitu. You just flow it out, yeah? uh, engage to all the people within the meeting room. You, you address the name, the, the person right away. And you're a person yang respect uh, very much on people's uh, inputs and ideas. Gitu, yeah? And the way you capture, itu, um, I, I always remember how you always paraphrase and reflect that to, to the, the conversation. Very much facilitative, gitu. Makanya, aku bilang, hmm, ada satu orang yang, salah satu orang yang aku tahu yang melakukan fasilitasi secara praktis, itu namanya Nico Kanter. <laughs> gitu. oh, <laughs> Makanya aku nanya Bu Ice, Bu Ice, minta nomornya Nico. <laughs> Well, I feel flattered ya, jadinya kayak gitu ya. Tapi ya. No, no, but it is, it is. So, Nico, Thank mungkin you. banyak orang kan, uh, meskipun ada berapa teman BP nih, kelihatannya di sini nih, ada Rini Hakim, ada Farida Sujatno, uh, ada Reti, udah ada di sini, ada Safira, ada Sofia Finolin, ada Edo, kalau um, oh, okay. <coughs> Edo Ismail, ada Jessica, ada... Amanda Devina, you might know her. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ada, Reng, uh, ada Rengina. Nah, all these people know you. Um, some of them know you very well. But maybe uh, pengen denger juga um, apa, who you are. What is your apa ya, career or journey? Gitu kan? Atau journey. professional journey. Ya? Okay. What, apa yang terjadi dengan Nico nih? Kan gitu. <laughs> Dari awal. <laughs> Okay, uh, okay. Let me start. Actually, <clears throat> I started off as a. First of all, I actually graduated from the law school, the Faculty of Law, University of Indonesia. Yeah? In uh, I think it was in back in 1983. It was embarrassing to mention the year because then you start calculating the how old I am. 
which is okay because I feel like I'm wine. You know, the, the older I get, <laughs> right. the better it is. <laughs> But right, uh, <laughs> very true. I, yeah. So I started off. Actually, I worked in the law firm first for one year, and then I moved. I joined Arco mm. as a junior lawyer. As a junior lawyer, so uh, as a junior lawyer in Arco, um, and I actually pursued a career. And you know, Arco at that time, the development program was kind of like. Uh, moving people around and then giving them exposures to different um, different department, different uh, actually discipline, which is actually a good mm. thing because nowadays, if you look at the how the corporate um, actually the functions, they are actually trying to deepen people in each functions, and then once they get to a certain level, then they start actually expanding it, but not like moving mm. people around like during my time. But it was it was I take it as a blessing, yeah, because I was moved around. From legal department to to materials to purchasing to HR to marketing, so I really get exposed in the different areas. So my my span of career. Did you see the Arco? It was in Arco, yeah. And Arco was taken mm. over by BP in 1999, but because mm. uh, the whole company was actually acquired, then our surface year was actually taken into account. So basically, mm. I spent. Like the span of twenty seven, twenty eight years in Arco BP, but the last part oh, okay. of it was BP in two thousand, basically two thousand through two thousand eleven. Now, so that's uh, mm. actually, and I moved, I moved in different department, and I reached to the, the, the career as the head of country of BP Indonesia, at that time. Yeah. So after the twenty eight years, and then I, I took. Um, A kind of like um, independent commissioner role in Valley, PT Valley or PT Inco at that time. Mm. So, Inco, uh, yeah, well, see, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. It was still, still I, Inco, it was right? still Inco because it is. It was in 2009 when I became one of the independent commissioner. That was actually the best thing because one, I was doing the the role as the head of country of BP, but I get actually different exposure in mm. in the in the in different industry. Yeah, so I do the. Mm -hmm. I did actually the the independent commissioner role for one and a half year, and mm -hmm. I got the offer to become the CEO or the president of PT Inco at that time. So it was actually. Uh, so that's 2011, yeah. When you started. 2011, to be the, yeah. Uh, the country director can basically for Valley. Now, that by that time still Inco. When is the time Inco. when Inco yeah. changed to Valley? So the name changed to Valley actually in January 2012. That's when we actually obtained the approval from the Minister of en uh, Energy and Mineral Resources, and then also the Menhukham mm. Law mm. and uh, Justice. So once we got that, uh, it was in 2012 January we became actually Valley, uh, PT Valley mm. Indonesia. So now I, without really, without realizing, I actually spent or I have assumed <laughs> the role of the CEO now for for. Over nine years, it was yeah, planned for three years. years. It's already. <laughs> Gila juga, kau nggak berasa deh kayaknya. Well, tahu -tahu, I think gitu. it, has, it is something that we have to feel uh, bersyukur banget ya. Kalau sampai nggak berasa kan berarti we are enjoying ourselves and then we feel actually um, we are like we are being valued. But at the same time, I think time flies so fast that I'm yeah, enjoying what true. I'm doing. Yeah, so I'm enjoying very exactly true. What, what I'm doing. What I see, what What I see your your career, even uh, by 2010 ish, you know, everybody yeah. talk about Nico Kanter in oil and gas. Everybody, and they always say uh, the rising star of uh, Nico, get you again know, uh, of Indonesian who who dare enough, who really brave enough to break the 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 sky, the limits, because you say no, nope, Indonesian can also lead in the country. And you prove it again and again uh, that it is possible for Indonesian. And I, I by that time tu masa seru kan ada Barry Lesmana di Citibank, ada kamu di yeah. di uh, BP Green. We were at, ada banyak orang-orang yang that time tu the Indonesians who really push the, the limits and say we can make it, we can make the difference. Can get it. Terima kasih ya. What makes you to Inco? I mean. Oh, That's a different, different area. We are in the beginning of industry. Huh? Pindah ke industri tambang, you know, very different from oil and gas, gitu kan? So, how do you see the difference, yeah? Hello. Export connections. 
I'm, I'm back again. <laughs> okay, no you're back again. Sorry. <laughs> what made you, you? Your question is uh, what made me move to Inco? Is that? Uh, is that? Was that the question? Yeah, so that's that, one. And also, what is the biggest difference between oil industry and a uh, 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 what you call a uh, mining industry? Okay. I think I think that's really a good question, there, Victoria. Um, I think first of all, what I actually am doing, I've been spending basically at that time, it's like 27, almost 28 years of my career. So it's like a lifetime career mm. for me to, to be actually in, in the oil and gas in BP. So when I get the opportunity to actually look at the different um, different industry, this is in the same actually extractive industry, yeah? but it is yeah, in the mining industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I thought that it would be a good exposure, but not only that, just to complete the cycle of the extractive industry in, in Indonesia, I thought that it would be good for me to actually do a stint in, in the mining sector. So that to complete the oil and gas and then the mining. And I thought at that time when I was doing the independent commissioner role, I see lots of challenges that we are facing mm. actually in the mining industry. So uh, because mining is still at that time is still being actually empowered to the local, as you know, uh, the decentralization, so everything is actually mm. still in the authority of the local government, be it the provincial level or at the kabupaten or at the regency level. Mm. Whereas in the oil and gas, mostly it is actually centralized in right. the central government. So I thought that, well, it would be good. And then uh, the other thing that uh, I feel that in BP, there are already a successor that is mm. ready because you don't want to be feeling too comfortable in one position. Mm. When you start feeling comfortable, then it's actually time for you to move on, to take <laughs> new challenge, and to provide opportunity for the the next uh, people to actually step up. True, so that's true. basically what 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 I thought um, as as the thing. And then the other thing is, of course, um, the mining sector are a bit uh, crazy with their <laughs> with their. Um, Remunerations, <laughs> so it is actually adding up to the whole thing. <laughs> Real case. <laughs> <laughs> so I cannot lie; I still need money at that time. You know? <laughs> but uh, very true, though. If it, uh, every time, um, by that time, yeah, when we moved, um, when we fly to Makassar, for example, the whole airport was like the Inco Airport, right? Because they have this very distinguished. Uh, section within the airport only for Inco, which is, I don't think that they have it now, uh, but, uh, no. but at least uh, there is a time when the yeah. Inco is very, what you call, prominent in, in the whole industry. Now, think about this, uh, Nick, uh, I, love the, uh, I love the journey that you have and how, how interesting you see um, yourself, uh, we see yourself growing from a um, junior lawyer all the way up to now become the CEO of a, one of the largest uh, mining, a mining company in the, in the country, right? What I always observe, as I said earlier, is how facilitative you are within your meetings and leadership is shown in meetings. However you want to avoid anything, meeting is the place where people can see your leadership. And now, are you still doing that? <laughs> Are you still you? <laughs> I am. I believe it or not, I am still me. <laughs> I, think, I don't think it will change, actually. <laughs> I'm still myself. I'm always, uh, I always love to be myself because it is uh, part of the thing that I uh, believe in, uh, being authentic as who true, you true. are. So, true, very true. Now, with that life uh, what you call life values, like being you. How do you see the the way you lead the the team? Mm. Can you just share with us, actually in real? How do you see yourself leading the team? How do you work with people? How do you uh, how people can really relate to you, you easily? And even even now, you know, people talk about you from Satpam in. Uh, TBC Matupang building still remember your name, you know? Because when I was there about four or three, three years ago, I passed and then say, eh, and then I, I met one of the guys and said, oh, temannya Paniko. <laughs> I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> your name is still lingering in that. 
office in and they know about me being your friend oh okay good <laughs> so how how do you how do you see that your your leadership style how how does it work okay this is uh, uh this is really a good question so i thought that what what i applied i actually learned this from my dad you know my my mm. late father yeah he's he's actually somebody that i always consider as my best mentor mm. because he was the one that actually mm, taught me about the most important character that the leader must have first of all is actually integrity yeah mm. integrity and ethic morale because mm. for him uh, a leader must have that because without integrity you basically will not get any trust and nobody mm. will actually be respecting you mm. without integrity now what is integrity integrity is uh, there are small things but there are also good th um, big things that you need to do yeah apart from the moral ethic because moral ethic is something that we learn from our religions you know everybody has their own religion so you actually sharpen your values yeah on the religion aspect of uh, somebody so you have to have a moral kita mesti punya akhlak ya. Hmm. Ayah saya selalu bilang itu. Karena apa itu menjadi uh, foundation yang paling kuat. Tapi hmm. the second thing that he said, integrity is something that you have to actually demonstrate. You walk hmm. the talk. You walk the talk. You actually say what you, uh, you do what you say you will do. You deliver what you promise. You know, those are the things that he always said that you have to do it. And then the other hmm. thing that he always reminded me that I, I will never forget this is that I should not let actually fear prevent me from saying or doing the right thing. Jadi, walaupun saya punya bos, punya pendapat, punya apa lain atau apa, walaupun pejabat apa, tapi saya tetap harus menyampaikan what hmm. I think and what I believe is right. Nah, penyampaiannya But, yang penting. Yeah, the beauty of you is the way you yeah. do it, right? Yeah. The beauty of Nico itu the way you express the the, the right thing. Because sometimes yeah. I always remember how um, apa uh, joke jorok joke joke joroknya itu kan banyak <laughs> banget gitu. <laughs> and you use that jokes gitu kan <laughs> and and fluently gitu kan Sem sampai semua orang ada Nico gitu. <laughs> everyone tepong jidat gitu kan <laughs> when you start doing that. But with that joke and jorok banget itu, you send the message gitu kan. <laughs> yeah, itu ya. I, sometimes you say like you pelajari sih, terus terang aja. You know, one of the things actually, my aspiration is actually to become one of you. You, I cannot write a book. I'm so lazy reading and then writing. So mm. I cannot write a book. But I would, I really love, I have a passion of actually becoming a coach. Now, mm. whether it is called a coach or it is a facilitator, or a trainer this is something that we have to actually define but i have my my own belief that you know once i am retired i really would like to become like a coach someone that can actually motivate people you know mm. actually uh, allowing people to reach their maximum potential so those are the thing that i have that in my in myself that will mm. not change that's why i said that mm -mm. i will not change that because even though i become a ceo but i still love to actually coaching yeah that's why one yeah. of my strength is actually to prepare my successor and i'm yeah. actually doing this on a daily basis to prepare my next successor who will become the ceo of of pt valley next year and they keep postponing mm. it but next year will be the deadline i already have have it in the contract because i i can no longer stay because it is not good it is not healthy for even for the organization for myself And also for her, because she is actually ready to step up. But I need to mm. actually uh, allow her to, to go to where it is. So you come back to the question. I said, this is something that I believe. I have the passions of coaching people. And the other thing that after, you know, on the, on, the, on the aspect of the leadership style that I have, I must say to you that one of the things that I implement and I believe holistically, wholeheartedly is humility. You know, why do I say humility is something that for me is important? One is that a humble leader usually will be able to use my, I'll be able to use my skills, my experience, my knowledge to attract and inspire people. And every time they will actually see that I am actually appreciating opportunities that I have and I feel grateful 
that they are going to support me because they, by supporting me, they will actually reach their maximum potential. Second, second, humble leader usually will listen more to other mm. people, which is much better than dominating conversation. Mm. So because what? True, true, true. Yeah, humble leader, they usually acknowledge, I will acknowledge my vulnerability. I actually mm. never hide my vulnerability. Why? Because by doing that, I'm allowing people to feel that they are actually okay. They're okay. And I'm, I'm human being, you know, like I'm yeah. just like yeah. any other people. So that is why I thought that uh, being humble or humility is one of the key thing that I am actually doing and I continue doing that. And that has really relate a lot to the facilitating skills that you probably talk about because yes. You know, you, you mentioned in your book also, which is I, which I believe in, uh, is that, you know, it's always like a very strong when we actually wanted to tell people about, okay, I am as vulnerable as they are. Mm -hmm. You know, like I put them, myself as human. So they will feel more like, okay, he is also having some flaws. He has mm -hmm. some vulnerability. So it's okay for us to say what we, what we think is right. And somebody with the exceptional humility, I, of course, I'm not there yet. I wanted to be there, but I wanted to be, to come to the humility character that is excellent, that I will get more and more respect from people because they will always see that I'm not actually claiming this as I it was the one who achieved that. This is the team achievement. And I also feel the grateful part, being grateful is always something that rather than being prideful of what, I have achieved. So that those but, are but, probably the yeah, thing that but, I, uh, I. It is. It is I very do. obvious uh, from the very beginning how you become you. I mean, uh, we always enjoy the joking time we have uh, <laughs> during lunch time or coffee, and everybody in the room always, you know, passing by. Even the satpam and uh, uh, tukang bawa barang and all the things and say paniko, <laughs> and and you still what I I I enjoy is always. You ask those people about how they are, how the family, even you remember about their kids. I remember that I saw you talking to one of the tukang bawa uh, surat-surat in that in that building, and say, "Eh, anak kamu udah lulus kan kemarin? You, you, your son is uh, graduated." Yeah. And I said, "Wow, you remember about that man having a son is graduating from school?" So I think that humbleness, hum humility, for you, if I uh, reflect that, it's more on the personal case you you pers you personalize the person <laughs> you you become um you become a part of them okay they are, uh, so it's it's one of the things that i enjoy now with that capacity with that capability i think that's that's the things that brings you up to to the ladder of success uh, i might say now oh before we go on I want to say hi to everyone here. There are, there are 21 people coming in. Nico memang okay banget ya. Ada Reti, ada Revi, ada Kartina. Halo Kartina, ada Sahara, ada Tasha. Tasha kemarin ikut dengan program kita. Uh, young leader talking about pemimpin Indonesia. So uh, Tasha, thank you for coming. Ada Omega Potranto, and it's one of the speaker. Um, ada Sisi, ada Afif, Alfred, Mahadi. Ada Francisca Cruz. Hi, Francisca Cruz. This is somebody from out of Indonesia. There are some people from Istanbul and from uh, wow. Hong Kong <laughs> coming and listen to you. Ada Rahmadiana. Ada Farida. Hello, Farida. Ada, ada Maya. Ada Akatia. Ada Novita. Ada Lee. Ada Bani. Ada Conan. Conan is also one of the young uh, speaker talking about leadership. So he might enjoy listening to you and your story. <laughs> Uh, ada Rachel, ada Rachel Kanter, is that your... Rachel, my daughter. <laughs> your daughter, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Hi Rachel, now I talk to your your father. And, Untung gak bilang gue elu, lu kacau nih kalau gak nih. <laughs> And then ada Nirwana, ada Inka, ada Inda, ada Tasha, ada Coach Irwan. Uh, thank you Coach, uh, sudah datang. Now, um, listen to, to Nico nih, we can talk a lot about uh, a lot of things nih. What is the biggest challenge, and uh, when you are you're when you're dealing with um, corporations, big corporations like BP, and then now Fale, what is the biggest challenge in people's area, and especially when you're saying that the 
this is the time for you to really preparing people to replace somebody. Yeah. So the succession of leaders, what might be the biggest challenge for you? Um, thank you. Thank you again for the question. The biggest challenge usually with the big corporations is that they have their own set agenda. Yeah. With mm -hmm. their own mindset and their own way of thinking how it should be done with their perspective. Mm. It, is, it is always a challenge because from that perspective, sometimes it does not actually match with the perspective, not only for, uh, for our government, you know, for our stakeholders, but even within the, the company itself. So even DP Indonesia, who actually have values and then have their own value, have their own perspective, this is something that you need to work on and you need to collaborate or you synergize. Mm. And that is becoming a challenge because they are sometimes they're, the push coming is too strong because when they actually change the organization, they said, okay, the organization should be actually structured in a matrix and functional, you know, functional versus matrix. And then this is how we should do it. It becomes a challenge. Second is about readiness of the Indonesians. Mm. I faced it when I was in DP. And I also face it when I'm here because when I'm actually preparing someone, like even my, my successor now, it has been the last two years, it was actually postponed. postponed. And they always have the belief because they thought that, okay, she's not ready. Mm. You cannot, I cannot make her become me, become myself. Yeah. She has her own strength that I do not have. Like in the finance area, even in the technical area, she is much better than I am. Well, I'm mm. quite good in the dealing with the uh, external stakeholders, with the unions, and then with the other people. But I can prepare her because she is so smart that she will be ready. She just needs the exposure. And sometimes when you want to deal with the government, mm. you have to have the positions. Mm. Because otherwise, you're not going to see the governor because they said, okay, right. where is the CEO? Right. And if I'm there, I will be the one who is actually going to see him all the time. So, you know, right. those are the things that sometimes is how do we actually align the perspective of the corporations and convince them mm. that the decision that we are going to make is better for longer term for mm. PTBI and for the corporations. And that is sometimes mm. becoming a... It's like a moving target because for them, like, mm. okay, it is good for who? For mm -hmm. PT Valley, but it is not good for the corporations yet because the corporations see that the challenge of dealing with the government is still going to be very strong and I still need mm. to be there to help. Mm. So, mm. you know, those are the things. The challenge is how do you actually manage the expectation of the corporations and how do you align that and manage the expectations of the government of Indonesia mm whether it is in the area of the contract uh, of work mm. or in the production sharing contract or even, even in the Indonesianization program. So those are, I think, um, pretty much the big challenge that I see in the big corporations, multinational companies. When, when you're dealing with this corporation and you work with this complexity, how do you maneuver? <laughs> because How do I that's maneuver? a tricky question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. A tricky... I have to be How careful. Do maneuver, maneuver. We, we don't want to listen yeah. all to the nice words, you know. <laughs> yeah. We want to, to see the gist of it. How do you maneuver? Yeah. Because that's a very unique. Because I think with your capacity, with your personality, it is. People might say, "Oh yeah, yeah, Nico, he can do it," but. What makes you you? Because, because you maneuver throughout very different alleys and, and you know how to stop, how to move, when to stop, when to move. And you also has this capacity of restricting and distracting, right? So yeah. how, do you, how do you maneuver? How do you, how do you yeah. make that leeway all the way up until the government say, okay, <laughs> or the BP International or... Inco, whatever the principle says, okay, you know? Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Victor, about the, the question. Because it is, it is a hard one. But uh, what, what I thought, maybe if I try to step back and then look at things, yeah, in the full perspective, yeah. First of all, I need to believe. I need, I need to convince myself that mm. whatever agenda that the corporation has, 
has value and has positive impact to both mm-hmm. yeah, to the corporations and to the government. By the same token, I'm also looking at the government agenda because government with the resource nationalism sometimes they are beyond, they're becoming too unrealistic. Yeah, they want to change, they want to take away everything. So everything just for the sake of getting, uh, you know, like the stake from from the big corporations at whatever cost. Now, the thing that I, I'm doing is that I have to first of all believe in it. Okay, mm. what is the best thing that is from the government perspective that they want, with still within a reasonable that actually can have an impact that is still positive to the corporations. The same Hold thing. With the you're saying you need to believe in them. I when need you to say believe, believe, believe in this, uh, the the government, for example. What do you mean by believe? Because you say also yeah. understanding them, but within the reasonable perspective. Yeah. Right. So, but how do you mean by believe? Yeah. You know, so believe is I have to convince myself. I have to convince myself that when the government wants to do a resource nationalism. which partly like divestment share has to be owned mm. by the by the uh, nationals and then we need to reduce our contract of work area for instance and mm. we need to build smelters you know mm-hmm. are, are those things actually something that will bring benefit to the country mm. yes if it is yes then i will also be able to see that the corporation has their own agenda and of course they don't want to build Everywhere they want to build mm-hmm. smelter, but they also don't want to give expensive. away. Yeah, it is very expensive, and then the return on investment is actually taking too long. Mm. And you know, for the contract of work area, they also want to give away, but they want to give away the the contract of work that does not have the deposit. If <laughs> they can do it, they would like to do it. Now, I need to be actually mindful with that. I need to believe that. Okay, if you want to relinquish, you want to let go, you have to let go something that has deposit. You cannot fool the government because if you fool the government, who is going to be the one that communicate to the government? It's going to be me, yeah. and I don't want to be held accountable for telling lies to the government. Something like right. that. So that's why I have to actually tell them that if you cannot develop the smelters and you cannot use the areas to the maximum, then we need to let go. We need to give to the government, and when we want to give to the government, give something that has deposit there. You cannot give something that is that does not have anything. So those are the things that I'm actually looking in details, and I'm being very transparent with my shareholders and with the government. So I'm telling mm. them that look, I'm not going to. I said I am not going to face the government where data is like try to hide or try to uh, not showing the data, and they actually respect me. I mean, believe mm. it or not, when we actually talk. Openly, but then we actually talk in a good manner. You know, you need to also understand sometimes the situations. And your boss is under a lot of pressure. You don't mm. want to talk at that time. You need to understand mm. his actually his emotional stage. I need to understand my emotional stage, and then mm. I need to communicate that in a better way, with more empathy. So mm. those are, I think, the thing that I I I think I, I and I believe that actually that's why. It is there, and that's why I still get the trust because they know that he is going to be himself, and he's going to tell us if this is not, if he does not agree with this, and if this is not going to go or fly. So that's why they believe me, and sometimes they actually allow me to go. Nico, I'll do mm. this what you said, but <laughs> I want to get, I want to conclude this, the whole thing. Right. So right. and I, I go all out too. So I will go all out. I, I'll strive for the give the very best to the to the corporations and to, to the government. I I like that. Uh, let me let me kind of like wrap it up uh, in a simpler way. So the first of all, when you are saying how to maneuver, when the question is how to maneuver throughout a very difficult situation and complexity, right? What you are saying is the first of all is towards yourself. You need to believe what is going on. You need to see what is going on and the whole picture of it, right? Yeah. So you won't miss the big picture, but you also understand the details. On the other hand, you also, besides seeing the big picture and the details, you also try to figure out what are the other alternatives and options that is possible. That is 
uh, maybe become the counterpoints when you're dealing with the government or with the, your your bosses uh, to really see how do we handle this differently. If when you are saying if smelter is too expensive, how do we handle uh, the other way around? How can we make it even better uh, for the government or for for the company to to do so? So you have alternatives. So it's not just coming to say, "Hey, boss, we have problems," and that's it. Yeah, but you come with a solution. You come with options, and those options and solutions is something that might give benefits not only for you but also for everybody around in the stakeholders. So you really think of the whole thing to be what you call um, 360 degrees view. Yeah, uh, it's it's really yeah. the whole thing. So does it mean that you need to be very smart to be you? Uh. I don't. I mean, if I may be honest with you, I don't think I actually am a very smart person. <laughs> this is very honestly, honestly, honest. No, no, I'm, I'm being honest. No, I'm not trying to cover up. I'm trying to play like I am low profile. No, no. But I don't think because my IQ definitely is not the IQ that um, uh, that my brother has or uh, somebody that I know has. So my IQ is okay, not bad, not IQ jongkok, nggak jongkok IQ-nya, tapi juga nggak yang tinggi sekali gitu ya. So, but what what I think what I, I I I was able to do is actually to generate and to give people actually give their very best. So I have a lot of people that is within the organization that I can tap mm. on that give their very best and they are very smart. So they are the one that actually excel, and I always acknowledge that as their thought process. Because when I negotiated, mm -hmm. I actually asked them the questions like, "Do you believe that you know this?" smelter actually will give the return on investment that quick or that long so why do you and then they will tell mm. me and you know when you are being vulnerable to your people believe it or not and they know that you always mm. fight for them they will make me the best they prepare me for my presentation yeah. they prepare me for every single point that i'm actually going to present to my corporation so that's why i thought that the leader's mm. role is not actually us to know all the answers no but the leader's role is actually to take care of the people who is in charge and allowing them to reach their maximum potentials without them i don't think i'm actually I'm nothing but because of because of the people and then it becomes a cohesive team you know what i'm seeing is the more we give the more we give the more people are going to back you up and then prevent mm. you and make you success. So my success is when, really purely because of the When you say the, the more you give, what do you mean by the me. more you give? When you say the more you give... The more I give, like, but I'm actually giving give? more time. Yeah. Mm. But when I said give, you know, I, I sacrifice time. I actually spend time with them. I, I, I coach them in mm. areas that they need help. I, I spend time with them. So. And I actually have this the problem with me is like work-life balance. I don't have work-life balance is <laughs> is not good with me. But but it is my choice, and I'm I'm happy. Still, I'm still happy. You know, I still can play tennis. I can still enjoy sports. But it is more. So I'm giving more to the people. I'm giving them empowerment. I'm giving them more. Like okay, you need to be exposed. You need to give these presentations, mm. and they will actually come back and say, "Why don't you actually say it?" Because you are the one that. So it is like it becomes like. Um, Reciprocal, which I don't, I don't like to use reciprocal because for me, when I do things, I do it wholeheartedly. I don't expect anything in return. Saya lakukan ini dengan tanpa pamrih. When I develop people, mm -hmm. not because I want them to take care of me when I'm pensioned, when I retire, but <laughs> I do it because without expecting anything in return. And that is, uh, people can read it. People will be able to read it and they will be able to actually know it. Indonesians are very indirect by nature but the good thing they also read between the line they read the body language they read um, everything better mm -hmm. so we cannot hide too long or we cannot hide characters that is not uh, is not good it will re mm. it will be revealed either by people yeah. surrounding you or they will know it <laughs> yeah 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 Nico, that's a wonderful way of uh, saying, uh, and I like the way you, you express it because uh, it's apparent to what the, the question is about to say, is how you bring people to their best, to their best capacities, is by also appreciating them. 
and you use your time, you spend your time uh, and coaching them, empowering them, allowing them to excel. And with that, um, those capacities around you, actually you are equipped with all the knowledge and understanding on how to deal with other stakeholders. Might that government or the other uh, corporations or even in the, uh, what you call the associations when you also, uh, once in a while, you also lead the associations, right? By, uh, by oil yeah. as well as now in, in uh, mining yeah. industry, extractive industry. But also, it also allows you to, to really see and prepare people uh, because then you will see also their leadership when you, you, when you are uh, coaching them or leading them uh, throughout the process. Nick, Ada, there is this question from Alfred. Pak Nico, what, will, what would be, be your best advice on leadership, especially for young people that reaches high position and having trouble to earn respect for older or more senior stakeholders? So this is for young people who are dealing with uh, you know, stakeholders, uh, as well as maybe the, the team. Sometimes you lead a team where people in, within your team yeah. is older than you are. So how do you, what is your advice? Okay, thank you, uh, Fred, for the questions. Yeah. Uh, it, is, it is always difficult because sometimes in Indonesia, seniority is still like being seen as, uh, as an important thing. But having said that, I have been through uh, situations where actually, when I was still young, of course not now. Now I'm already become one of the seniors now. But <laughs> when I was still, when I was still young, I actually, you know, what what you need to do is that uh, a lot of the people, the young people, they are very good because of their uh, capacity and their intellectual ability, and mm. they get there because of that. So they earn that from that. And the thing that sometimes is difficult in Indonesia, in the country, is that you need to actually equip yourself with some of the, uh, the EQ skills. The mm -hmm. EQ skill is, uh, is something that you need to understand yourself, you need to understand your emotional stage, and then you need to understand others so that when you communicate with the other people, you are able to communicate in a better way. Many times, the younger people, because they are result oriented you know may a lot of the younger people are result oriented mm -hmm. they are they actually grew up and they actually was educated overseas in the us where equalitarian principles actually applies and right. unfortunately in indonesia it is still need to be um, balanced so you manufactured need to, <laughs> yeah you need to be manufactured <laughs> so that people uh, you actually need to acknowledge that okay they are they are the one who knows best. Sometimes you need to pose it in the questions, even though you have an idea, mm -hmm. but you need to pose it as a questions more than you are actually preaching to acquire. Because if you are preaching, uh, then they will actually say, yeah. yeah, they will say, okay, who the hell do you think you are? But if you pose right. it in a question, I also don't know. So you acknowledge sometimes vulnerability. It actually makes the people mm -hmm. feel good. Then you can still mm -hmm. reach your agenda or your idea by by actually getting them answer the way you want the answer to be. So it is a long answer, but you know, it, there is a lot of things when you actually wanted to deal with the external, you need to be able to, to acknowledge that they are the one who knows, they are the one who make the decisions, so that you come there with humility. Because sometimes you are there, you have the agenda, and you want to right away deliver the agenda, and then you start communicating mm -hmm. that to the people. And that is usually become a flaw mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in, the, mm -hmm. in the, you know, in the interactions with the, with the senior people and the government stakeholders. Nico, uh, let me uh, pause you a little bit because I want to say hi to people who are joining in, right? Ada Pitoyo, Fanny, ada Irvan, ada uh, Shalmayi, I think. I, we need Shalmai to really write down where you are coming from. Tasha, ada Yoletuta Lula, ada Hetty, ada Umi, ada Mas Diana, ada Ibu Dini, Ibu Dini Yusuf. Uh, maybe Nico, you know Ibu Dini? Uh, yeah. She, she leads um, 
uh, Toraja Melo, <laughs> which is oh, Toraja close Melo. to close to your uh, uh, center di 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 Makassar. Uh, ada Alfred, ada Chika, um, and um, we have uh, around 15 minutes to go. But there is this um, Sofia Sofia Inolin uh, asking Pak Nico. What character that you believe influence your achievements the most and why? Well, uh, Sofia, tadi uh, Paniko shared about his father, and maybe Nico, you yep. you share with uh, Sofia what is the besides yep. the value of humbleness and integrity, yep. but uh, why is he the most uh, what you call the most important person for you and your your career? Yeah. Yeah, my, my, my late father, Sophia, yeah, it's, it's my late father actually taught me about this, um, this uh, integrity, integrity and ethic morale. It is very important. I think that's one of the character that, is, uh, that a leader must possess, yeah, because uh, that's where trust actually will, will start molding. When you become a leader, to achieve where I am now is I need to demonstrate that integrity and ethics. Because once I get mm. that, and I can actually demonstrate that on a becoming like a daily basis, and I becomes like my value that I hold most dearly to me, people will actually believe me, because they will see that okay, when he say this, he will do it, and when he say mm. if it is something that is not right, I will actually say it, without without any fear of you know it's in danger my career blah 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 no, I will actually do it. That is why I said that that is actually a character that people will say okay Nico he is uh, he is always authentic. He is who he is. He will tell you what what he likes and what he does not like. So it, it, it becomes the value where I, I I hold dearly to me. But the character that I also said I mentioned that already mentioned by Victor is about the humility. Uh, humility is something that will allow other people to to actually reach their maximum potential. That will also allow people that I'm actually listening to them. And when you listen, especially when you listen with empathy. You listen holistically, not like you listen because you want to validate your thought process or your idea. So that is uh, the two things that's important. Of course, the last one, the third one, that is always strive to give your very best in anything you do. So in my my career has been moved around. When I'm in HR, I strive for excellence in HR. When I become a lawyer, I strive for excellence. Do my very best in a law firm. So there is no compromise of getting some mediocre result or something like that. You have to do. You have to provide your very best. It may not be enough, but at least people will see that you always fight, you always work hard to give your very best. Um, let me let me ask you these uh, questions because um, especially for the last 10 minutes that we have, right? How do you now? Currently, we are having this pandemic. It also affects the business, right? It affects also well, it affects every aspect of life uh, in a, uh, the whole in a global global sense. Now, when you're talking about Uh, extractive industry, and then now uh, you are also preparing somebody to 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 be the leader, the next leader. How do you see the business coming uh, moving forward, and how what type of leaders do we need? Uh, how how does it how does this what you call uh, humility, vulnerability, integrity, uh, being the best still strive and The the question that close to me is how do you bring your facilitative uh, way of leadership, especially yeah. in the future? Does it make sense? Yeah, it it does make sense because um, you know one of the the challenge now everyone is actually facing this uh, problem yeah with this pandemic uh, the situations that we are in is not only happening in the corporations in the industry in the Indonesia but it's across the globe so. Everywhere you are facing the same thing. So the corporations face their own challenge. Now the mm. the beauty or the blessings that we had is that we can learn from a big corporation has operations in different countries. Like we are in the 38 countries, so we actually can learn from each countries on how do we actually face these challenges. And mm. now facing the challenge, uh, the other thing that we are blessed with, you know, in the uh, in the mining industry is that. There is so far very little impact on the operations. Our productions, the first half of, uh, of our production last year and this year, actually this year is more than that. But mm. the way we work is actually different. 
So now mm. the challenge now that we have is that we need to be careful because right now our office in Jakarta is still closed. Our office in Sorowako is open, but not like the supporting function. They're all working from home. But the people that actually work on a daily basis is the people that is actually the frontliners at the mm. plant, at the minings, at the site. So now uh, the challenge is that people are, uh, while they are actually happy, because we find ways of working differently, because we actually become effective. This is the first time in my life after 30, 38 years of my span of career that I never traveled the last six months. <laughs> I'm stuck in Jakarta. <laughs> I'm stuck in Jakarta. So, you know, I usually fly around. I'm in Canada. I'm also often in Brazil, in Sorwako, in Palu, in Makassar. I'm everywhere. Now, of course, I'm missing that, that, that travel because sometimes I took the, tra the travel also as a break. But then now there is a new way of working. Because even the, the, the workshop that we usually have in Canada, in Toronto, like maybe two, three times a year, and even once in, in Brazil, now everything happened in, through virtual. Mm. And of course, it is not as effective now. One of the things that you challenge is how do you use that facilitative skills? You can still use it, uh, Victor. And I'm sure mm. you know how actually to, you, to do it best. <laughs> but for me, I'm having a hard time like trying mm. to, to, because for me, sometimes I need the face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah. Mm. I'm missing mm. that. Honestly, I'm, I'm mm. not, I'm the type yeah. of person that likes to, to meet and then to be able. Yeah. But then when you meet like this, I'm actually as passionate and as engaged as I am. And I see you in the, True. even in the camera <laughs> now, I'm, I'm still as engaged as I am. So right. I think we can still find ways of, of doing it uh, better. And I don't know, to be honest with you, how do we think that, the, but I still believe that the, the characters of the integrity still needs to be there. It, it will not disappear because of this pandemic or because of the virtual situation that we, we, are, we, are, we have to face now. Even, mm. even more so now that you need to actually demonstrate how do you do this empathy? Mm. This, if you, in a way that people feel that you are touching them without actually yeah. being able to face to face with them. So yeah. those are a uh, challenge, but I believe that we can still use the power of silence even in the in the virtual yeah because sometimes mm. you want to allow people to talk and mm. we as the expressive like a uh, very extrovert person sometimes <laughs> does not have the passion patience to 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 wait and then to we listen. jump in but then to listen <laughs> so we have to we have to watch that still we have to watch that but i, right. I think we can still survive in the in the situations where we are in um, Ibu Ice is here, so she said hi to you. <laughs> Ibu Ice and Ibu um, Idat, uh, ada Ria Purboy, Rio Pur, pa, Rio, Professor Rio Purboyo, thank you for joining in. Uh, ada Medi Christine, hi Medi. Um, so good to see Medi uh, joining in as well. Oh, ini Esmai is FG from UNJ. Oh, Universitas Negeri Yogyakarta. All right, um, Nico, uh, when you're saying that at the moment, actually, the extractive industry is still uh, working well. Yeah, operation and uh, production is still doing well. But the way you work is different. Now you are working through online and we are, we are uh, having difficulties or challenging in dealing with who usually deal with face-to-face, -face, who are usually meet people at their face, right? Really see them uh, uh, in person. Now you're dealing with this camera and, and um, what you call uh, distance. Uh, and in effect, it's very uh, possible because then the world is very much in a fingertip, right? Yeah. Uh, but as you said, the challenge is to really, uh, really understand people through this uh, media. Uh, really listen to them, really understand what they are saying. And that's where your integrity, humility, um, as well as uh, being, being you as you are is still available. It's still possible to, to, to be done, to be seen uh, by other people. Now, we can do this because we trust each other. We see each other. We know each other. We have been friends for a long time. But how do you deal with people who are very new? You just know them. You just meet them in a sense because of the social media. 
uh, or maybe she or he kind of like come to to you for you know um, say a meeting or or maybe interviews and things like that how do you bring that um what you call belief or emotional quotient whatever whatever values that you have yeah i uh, victor thank you again for a question i actually posed it to you i said that look i mean the challenge is how do we actually work that without actually having the uh, possibility of face to face but then at the same time i'm actually i'm meeting a couple of people that i was interviewing for a job in in bali and mm-hmm. uh both actually uh, one is uh, we accepted it and then the other one we actually did not accept mm. but i think um the ability to your ability to communicate yeah to communicate mm. and being present with the people actually that matters same yeah. like when you want to reach out when you demonstrate care people will know it when it comes mm. with genuinity sincerity whether you see the person face to face or you see it through virtual because i've got the comments and i received the comment from both people that was accepted and that was not actually it was rejected i can actually mm. call back and then he thanked me and then for mm. me when i called him i called him i also called him in you know, a follow up call and he was mm. like shocked he said that oh I'm, i'm i feel so honored by, by the by the see i just said okay how is it your process where is it the process now and and he actually he told me that uh, this is like something that is uh, good so care you know like this mm. touching people caring for people with sincerity mm. doesn't matter whether it actually is done through telephone through uh, media that we can mm. talk like this we can do face to face because you know like things like that happen and even i was like talking to one of my aunties that actually um, very close auntie yeah, that uh, my son actually live in manado at at her house but he was actually infected for covid and he was so bad and then uh, mm. her voice is so and i i can talk to her by phone and then there's no video yeah i talk to her by phone mm. i can see i can hear the voice and she can hear my voice mm. i was in tears mm. Mm. so that is i think that is uh, it is still it doesn't matter whether it is like through media uh it is still uh, but of course probably it is easier the uh the, the the result but i'm seeing result that when you reach out to people demonstrate the care and the genuinity care it will actually be still be there whether it yeah. is through phone or other media like this yeah nico it's so good talking to you but unfortunately our time is so limited with only <laughs> one hour and so we have the last two minutes uh to share um but let me let me share and summarize uh to everyone who is coming here nico has been 38 years in um as a professionals and starting from a lawyer junior lawyer in arco all the way become now the ceo of vale indonesia and now even preparing somebody to become the ceo and he's releasing the the post that he is doing next year eh? to 2021 and with that uh, during the whole 38 40 years of experience uh, values of um, being humble being having the integrity uh, creating a space for people to to be um as they are or becoming or performing and also allowing people to to see your vulnerability you say it so so many times being vulnerable and also having this um ability to to bring the best out of people so when when you're dealing with issues very complex issues you're not alone actually after why you are backed up by a lot of different and good people and they will give the best out of it to support you or, or even to feed you with all the information and and knowledge that needed with that also you maneuver throughout different stakeholders you're dealing with different issues and complex issues and what you are saying at the current condition you are very blessed that corporations big corporations 
allow you to see uh, the best practices that people are doing during the pandemic, right? Um, how people are doing, how people are uh, managing uh, the or change it throughout the process. But you also say that even when we are having this online uh, uh, mechanism, which is not face-to-face -face right away, we still be ourselves. We still be a caring person. And that is very...